Good evening. This is an extraordinary period for America's economy. Please excuse the mask. I'm getting ready to spend $700 billion of your money, and I really don't want us to be seen in public. Anyway, over the last few weeks, many Americans have felt anxiety about their finances and their future. I understand their worry and their frustration. We're in the midst of a serious financial crisis, and the federal government is about to make the biggest mistake in recent history. My administration is working with Congress to address the root cause behind much of the instability in our markets. This rescue effort is not aimed at those Americans with good credit ratings, who pay their mortgages and taxes on time, and buy only what they can afford. It is aimed at those Americans with bad credit ratings, whose default on their mortgages, owe back taxes, and who consistently spend up to their credit limits. I believe these people should be rewarded for making bad decisions, and I believe the American taxpayers should pay for these rewards. I know many Americans have questions tonight. How did we reach this point in our economy? How will the solution I propose work? And what does this mean for your financial future? These are good questions and they deserve honest answers. First, how did our economy reach this point? Well, most economists agree that the problems we're witnessing today developed over a long period of time. Lending institutions were making subprime loans, which is basically extending a loan to an otherwise unqualified borrower. These same institutions were also making stated loans, which allow you to state any income, or essentially lie, on your application in order to qualify for a loan. Easy credit, combined with the faulty assumption that home values would continue to rise, led to excesses and bad decisions. Many mortgage lenders approve loans for borrowers without carefully examining their ability to pay. Many borrowers took out loans larger than they could afford, assuming that they could sell or refinance their homes at a higher price later on. As a result, many mortgage holders began to default. These widespread defaults had effects far beyond the housing market. See, in today's mortgage industry, home loans are often packaged together and converted into financial products called mortgage-backed securities. These securities were sold to investors around the world. The decline in the housing market set off a domino effect across our economy. When home values declined, borrowers defaulted on their mortgages, and investors holding mortgage-backed securities began to incur serious losses. These investors, many of whom hold MBAs from Ivy League schools and should have known better, made bad decisions and should now be rewarded. With the situation becoming more precarious by the day, I faced a choice. To step in with dramatic government action, or to stand back and allow the market to adjust itself to normal levels. The government's top economic experts warned that without immediate action by Congress, investors, wealthy businessmen, and politicians could lose their Rolexes, Jaguars, and be forced to move from $20 million homes into substandard $10 million homes. In addition, borrowers who were unable to control their finances and spent every cent they had for nice cars, widescreen televisions, and vacations in Tahiti, duh, are now losing their homes. Fellow citizens, we must not let this happen. Understand the frustration of those Americans who pay their mortgages on time and file their tax returns on time and are reluctant to pay the cost of excesses on Wall Street. Many Americans are asking how would a rescue plan work? Basically, we'll steal money from the middle class taxpayers as usual and give it to the wealthiest Americans in the banking industry, the investment sector, and of course to the politicians who are heavily invested in the stock market. The final question is, what does this mean for your economic future? Well, the primary steps, purpose of the steps I've outlined tonight, is to safeguard the high standard of living of the wealthy. 
The federal government will continue to enforce laws and regulations protecting this high standard and will increase the taxes for the working middle class Americans to ensure the wealthy stay happy and secure. Our economy is facing a moment of great challenge, but we've overcome tough challenges before, and we will overcome this one. Thank you for listening. May the force be with you.